our program, uh, we will go to Senegal. Uh, so we've moved from the Horn of Africa and we're going west. So we're taking you on a journey and we will ask Dr. Uh, Salio Dione, who I think is already with us in, in the room to join us. And as I give him just an introduction, he's a lecturer and researcher uh, of African and post-colonial studies at Czech Ante Diop University of Dakar in Senegal. And he, he has been a, a senior Fulbright visiting scholar. Uh, at the State University of New Jersey in the United States. Uh, his main interests are uh, research on society, politics, the diaspora, migration, economy, culture, and many others. And he has written a wide range of publications um, along his lines of interest. He's given various lectures as well as uh, provided different types of communication. Um, in the US, some of the notable universities, Georgetown Technical College, the State University of New Jersey, the City College of London and Columbia University. And with those uh, re uh, introductory remarks, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Dione to join us and give us his presentation. Thank you a lot and welcome to, to Senegal. And I hope that the journey was not that long for you. I really thank all the organizers for uh, inviting me to join in the panel, but especially uh, to write just uh, one section of the chapter on uh, the pandemic in Africa. Because when you say the COVID-19 pandemic in Africa, local response and global strategies is already the title of a book. And But we are just asked to mirror one aspect of this, which is uh, migration, also uh, African migrant, specifically uh, migrant from, from Senegal in different parts of the world. Now, looking at it, I will be first interested in looking at uh, the paradoxical situation uh, that we really see in which the pandemic to Europe and from Europe to Africa movement. Uh, to realize that actually, uh, when we look at the Western media, what we see is that images of African migrants trying to enter Europe on board of overloaded fishing boat. But when we come to COVID-19, we don't really see images of African are fleeing Europe uh, because of the pandemic, uh, despite the UN and the WHO uh, prediction and warning of 3 million deaths over COVID-19, which is yet to happen. Actually, we can see the paradoxical situation that really uh, happened, even if the WHO was saying that actually, uh, there would be 3 million people dying over the pandemic. Uh, uh, migrants decided to go back uh, to, to their country because many of them uh, face uh, a particular situation. They find themselves in a situation of dial bind in which they had to make a decision between living and saying as COVID-19 was uh, unexpectedly ravaging Europe and US leaving many people dead or saying uh, with the risk of not being able to go back to their lives and job in Europe after COVID-19, being stuck in Europe without income and fully income. Since most work uh, sectors like commerce, industry, and the service hotel were badly hit by the lockdown, or becoming sick and dying far away from home with the suspension of flight uh, that we really witnessed uh, everywhere in the, in the world. Some of them even, uh, made the choice of traveling by road through Morocco and, Mar and Mauritania. And one of the cases that really captured uh, the national imagination was that of a man uh, who had flown back from Italy in early March and was tested positive for COVID-19. And he was subjected to stigmatization and public accusation along with other returning migrants as the one who really brought the uh, brought COVID-19 into, in, into the country. So those people, they, they went from admiration to a situation of stig stigmatization. I talk about admiration because uh, many of them, uh, they highly contributed to the economy of, of Senegal, but uh, they were also the one taking care of their families and providing uh, for health care and also uh, for education and, 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 and something like that. So because of uh, the, the impact, then those who were providers of entire house or to social, I mean, from uh, heroic status as providers of entire house or to social exclusion of, a, of a, uh, COVID-19 because of the situation of stigmatization. 
and also uh, the situation uh, caused by the COVID had an impact uh, on their family at home because many of them were depend on, on, on them. So they could no longer uh, find enough resources to, uh, to live. But the informal sector was also well affected because many of them were the one who used to buy goods and then send back home so that people, especially young people who are here, uh, they use those products and then sell them in the market. So uh, a very complicated situation was brought by COVID-19 because of uh, the situation of the migrants, especially those who are in Italy, those who are in Spain, uh, in, in the United States of, of America. Now, if we come back to the responses, we can say that responses uh, are at the continental level, regional, uh, national, uh, but also at the migration solidarity level. When we talk about uh, regional level, I'm really referring to the first decision that was taken by the ECOWAS country, meaning because Senegal is a member of the ECOWAS, uh, the Economic Community of West African States. Uh, when the COVID-19 first brought in China, uh, the member country, they got together and decided not to repatriate any citizen from the area because of risk of contamination. Now, I'm sure that this is one of the reasons why uh, the pandemic did not return for the day, but another reason... Tadion, have we missed you there for a bit? I think the network is poor. Yes, maybe he could also just turn off the video for a bit if he can hear us and then we see if it improves. The African Union has really been mitigating the, uh, the, 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 the pandemic and this uh, make it uh, something that is similar that we can find in every uh, countries in, in Africa. When we come to the migration solidarity level, this is looking at how the migrants themselves try to mitigate uh, the pandemic, not only in their home country, but also in, uh, in, in their host country. When we take the example of migrant association and migrant religious association from, especially the Muridia Brotherhood, uh, they distributed food and gave money to their members and non-members to mitigate the adverse effect of COVID-19 in the host country, and even contributed to the resilient forces in the host country. One example that we can take is the migrant from Bergamo in Italy. Uh, they collected money and then collected food and contributed to uh, the resilient force in, of the Italian, Italian government. Now, coming to the national level, now, there was what would call a strategic public spending to support livelihood and diaspora migrant workers. And the diaspora contribute a lot to uh, the economy of Senegal through the remittances, but also through the, that they pay uh, uh, through uh, the product that they use using airplane or using, uh, uh, using the, uh, the sea. The Senate government had initiated responsive response program intended to limit its effect on the poor, the migrant and their family in their host country and origin country. Uh, the Senegalese migrant benefit from a substantial envelope of over 20 million euro under what was called the diaspora COVID-19 force. Then the Senegalese government set up a program that was uh, called the diaspora COVID-19 force for the management of the effect of the coronavirus with the private living relating to the Senegalese in situation of vulnerability, or in the course of regularization of say, the Senegalese evolving in the informal sector and to the retiree who are in very exposed household. Now, the Senegalese stranded in countries uh, other than their countries of residence and in transit zone, like compatriots who are not beneficiaries of crisis aid or assistance from the host country, were also part of the support program. To benefit from this assistance, uh, Senegalese migrants were just required uh, to complete an application form on a dedicated platform. There were also repatriation flight for Senegalese living abroad uh, that was stranded in the uh, host country or in their way back to Senegal. Uh, those uh, repatriation flights were also initiated by uh, the, uh, the Senegalese government under government sponsored plan. The diaspora from which uh, some received up to 
uh, 300 euro was initiated and operationalized, meaning the government also distributed money uh, to, to some families uh, in the diaspora that were really in, in, in need of support. Uh, the Senegal government also granted a 200 euro subsidy on flight ticket prices for Senegalese migrants returning to resume work in the in the host in the host country. Now, coming to the support, I don't really like the word support because of the underlying connotation. But I would rather uh, talk about cooperation with bilateral and multilateral partners under COVID-19. Uh, we know that uh, the Senegalese national living in the country, like religious leaders, uh, civil servants, even the Sudan, uh, private individual and abroad, even the migrant who live in Italy, in Spain, uh, in, uh, in Belgium, in the United States, they also contributed to uh, to the force that was uh, set up by the government because the government opened open a, a, a bank account and asked people to really contribute to uh, to that. Then the migrant, they so uh, contribute. You also had local embassies in Senegal also contributed to uh, to, to, to the public was set up by the Senegalese government. We also had uh, local partners like the private sector and also some multinational uh, companies operating in the country, in the mining sector. Uh, the, some of them also contributed to, uh, to the public force. We also have uh, the World Bank, a uh, multilateral partner, but also bilateral partners who contributed to, uh, to, to, to the force. Now, the other aspect that we really need to, to look at is uh, how are we going to uh, to reimagine a society beyond the, the pandemic? And to reimagine this society beyond the pandemic, uh, we really need to look at or to rebuild new cooperation model and ties for post-COVID-19. And for this, we need to upgrade South-South cooperation with India, China, Brazil, and others. And we all know that the relationship between African country and India date back a long time ago, especially with the Bandung Conference, that uh, the relationship between Africa and it is not some new. Especially the relationship between India and Senegal is something that is new. Now, what we need to do is just to see uh, how to upgrade South-South cooperation and also how to upgrade North-South cooperation based on a win-win partnership and not on economic dependency. And for this also, we need to, uh, in upgrading this partnership, we also need how to to see how to include uh, the Senegalese uh, diaspora uh, to make their mm -hmm. stay easier in, in their host country. In many ways, the pandemic presents opportunities for African people, especially for Senegal, uh, to see uh, itself differently and the world to mm -hmm. consider Senegal and Africa as a partner in finding solutions to complex problems such as uh, COVID-19. I think uh, we all know that uh, compared to other countries or to other uh, continents uh, in the world, uh, mm -hmm. Africa has really recorded uh, uh, a few number of, of cases. Okay, mm -hmm. it, uh, and then it, this is to say that the world has so, a lot to sorry, learn Sorry, Dr. Dione, I'll give you uh, from, one from minute. African, especially from... I'll, just give you, I'll just give you a minute to wrap up, just a minute. Okay, thank, thank you. Now, what also we need to do is uh, look at uh, how to promote local production, because as the Western government has now realizing mistakes that have been done in outsourcing production of everything uh, to China from masks to ventilators, and I think the Senegalese government has now understood it. Uh, we especially uh, the cooperation of even some migrants that uh, uh, came back home, uh, they try to see how to uh, means uh, ways and means to produce mass locally instead of importing mass from from China or from other other countries in the world. As I said, it uh, this is just one aspect that we're looking at to write a chapter on on the COVID nineteen in Africa. And I think I'm just going to stop here and then wait for the question and then and then they proceed. Thank you. I can thank you very much, uh, Dr. Salio Dion, uh, for that uh, very insightful um, uh, um, sharing and presentation. 
I think we could actually take a whole day on each country as I sit here nodding my head and taking down my notes that each country is due to have a panel tense, uh, a, a panel discussion on this. So maybe we can pass this on to the organizers to see how we could uh, take this further because there's a lot of information. Um, you know, the, the whole thing of admiration to, to, to stigma, that's, that's very interesting. And also the, the solidarity um, that is around the migrant groups and the support that they have been given both from the migrant associations and the religious leaders, the involvement of private sector, uh, how important ECOWAS is, um, and also in, in looking at the role that, uh, that the government has done in providing consular support to stranded migrants. Um, cooperation is a good word, and I agree with you that it should be more cooperation than support. So I think we can add more points uh, in the next session when we, when, 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 we, uh, when we talk more about the global strategies. 